Greetings to everyone. Welcome back once again to this educational channel called Learn Bio with Janet. I'm teacher Janet and today we'll be discussing Form 4 Biology, KSSM Syllabus, Chapter 7, Subtopic 7.1, Production of Energy Through Cellular Respiration. So let's get started. The learning standards for today's lesson are as follows. 7.1 Production of Energy Through Cellular Respiration Number 1. We should be able to justify the necessity of energy in metabolic processes. Number 2. Be able to identify the main substrate used in energy production. Number 3. List the types of cellular respiration and these are aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Apart from that, Another alternative pathway is fermentation. Firstly, let's answer the first learning outcome. Justify the necessity of energy in metabolic processes. In other words, explain the importance of energy production and usage in metabolic processes. Explain the importance of energy production and usage in metabolic processes. So firstly, what are metabolic processes or metabolism? Now, all this refers to the all the chemical reactions that occur in a living organism in order to maintain life, in order for the organism to carry out its living processes and to sustain life. Now, actually there are two types of metabolic processes as we have studied in chapter 5. Of the form 4 syllabus. Okay, so we can refer back to that, that uh, chapter. So metabolic processes can be divided into catabolic processes and anabolic processes. Now catabolic processes involve the breakdown of complex substances into simpler substances and these processes, these processes release energy. Okay, so when there's breakdown of complex substances like glucose into simpler substances like carbon dioxide and water through the process of cellular respiration. Then energy is released. Then this energy from the breakdown of glucose huh, in cellular respiration is stored in the form of ATP and it can be used for anabolic processes. Okay. So the, the example given here for a catabolic process is the breakdown of glucose in cellular respiration to produce energy for the cell. Now, on the other hand, anabolic processes, they are just the opposite of catabolic processes. They involve the synthesis of complex molecules from simpler molecules, such as the synthesis of proteins, which are complex, from the simpler molecules, the building blocks called the amino acids. So Anabolic processes use energy or need energy for the synthesis of the complex molecules. So this energy, where does it come from? From the catabolic processes, right? So energy from catabolism is used by cells to carry out anabolic processes, such as the synthesis of protein, which is a component for muscle uh, tissue, for muscle formation, and uh, production of enzymes and hormones, in the cells and energy is also needed for the synthesis of complex compounds like glycogen and lipids in the cell right so this is the importance of energy production in metabolic processes this is so that it can be used for other metabolic processes called the anabolic processes such as these three examples so if there is no energy from metabolic processes or from catabolism, the anabolic processes cannot be carried out and the cell will finally die. Now let's look at this question, eh, which is slightly different from the earlier one. Justify the necessity of energy production through metabolic processes, such as respiration. 
Okay, so uh, here we are going to explain the importance. We are asked to explain the importance of the production of energy through uh, respiration, all right, and its usage. What is it used for in the cells? Okay, so overall, organisms require energy which is produced through metabolic processes like respiration in order to carry out cellular processes such as those below. Firstly, the synthesis of lipids, hormones, proteins and enzymes. Uh, these are all anabolic processes where complex molecules like lipids, hormones, proteins and enzymes are produced uh, through anabolic processes and they require energy. All right? But other than uh, anabolic processes, other processes also require the use of energy. Okay, for example, when the organism carries out muscle contractions to enable the movement of its body parts, uh, this needs energy from respiration okay, for the muscle contractions to occur. Also, energy is needed for cell division in which new cells are produced for the growth of the organism. Energy is needed for the absorption of digested food through active transport. When the food is uh, transported from the digestive system into the blood uh, capillaries, for example, right? So any form of active transport of movement of a substance against its concentration gradient will require use the use of energy from cellular respiration. Lastly, energy is needed to maintain the body temperature at the optimal temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So humans are warm-blooded organisms that have to maintain their body temperatures at the optimum temperature of 37 degrees Celsius all the time, right? So they need to uh, obtain heat energy from cellular respiration for this process. So this diagram illustrates what we have just discussed. Metabolism or metabolic processes can be divided into catabolism or catabolic processes and anabolism or anabolic processes. In catabolism, there is the breakdown of larger complex molecules, such as is shown here, into smaller molecules with the release of energy when the chemical bonds are broken. One example is respiration, where glucose is oxidized or broken down to produce simpler molecules like carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy. Then this energy is used for anabolic processes or anab in, uh, used in the process of anabolism. So anabolism is the opposite of catabolism in that it is the synthesis of larger complex molecules from smaller molecules. Okay, so smaller molecules combine together, bonds are built between the molecules to form the larger, more complex molecules. And this requires energy or uses energy. So examples are the synthesis of proteins, glycogen and fats in the body from the building blocks like amino acids. Uh, proteins are built from amino acids. Glycogen is built from the, is formed from uh, glucose and fats are formed from fatty acids and glycerol. Second example is photosynthesis in plants where simpler, simpler molecules like carbon dioxide and water are used to form the complex organic molecules like glucose. So again, this diagram shows us what was discussed just now. Why do cells of organisms need energy? So cells or organisms need energy to carry out their anabolic processes, such as the synthesis of lipids, proteins and enzymes, the synthesis of complex molecules from simpler molecules. They also need energy to maintain the optimum body temperature, the optimum body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius to carry out muscle contractions to enable movement and they need energy for cell division. Organisms need energy for cell division to produce new cells for growth 
and also for active transport of substances, for example, in the absorption of digested food. Let us now answer learning outcome or learning standard number two. A. Identify the main substrate used in energy production. So the main substrate used in energy production is glucose, right, for uh, humans and also for animals and plants. The main substrate used in energy production is glucose. Now explain how glucose is used to produce energy. So glucose is the main substrate used in cellular respiration, which is a process, the process in which the glucose is broken down, is oxidized or broken down to produce energy for cells, right? So it is through cellular respiration that the glucose is broken down to produce energy. So cellular respiration is defined as the process of oxidation or breakdown of organic molecules, molecules containing carbon, organic means contains carbon, atoms. Examples are glucose. Uh, or example of an organic molecule is glucose, which is uh, broken down through several stages, not just uh, in one step, uh, but the glucose is slowly broken down uh, from one stage to another until finally it forms carbon dioxide and water, right? And this releases energy in stages. So the main aim of cellular respiration is to release energy through the breakdown of glucose. Now, during cellular respiration, the chemical bonds in the glucose molecules, so this is one glucose molecule, okay, the compound is like a ring compound, huh? and the formula for glucose is C6H12O6. So there are chemical bonds between the atoms in the glucose molecules. And during respiration, these chemical bonds are broken down to release chemical energy. So this chemical energy provides the energy for cellular activities such as muscle contraction, active transport, and anabolic processes like synthesis of proteins. Let us look at this short question. Explain how humans, animals and plants obtain glucose to produce energy. So we already studied that glucose is the main substrate used in the production of energy through cellular respiration. Now for humans and animals, the glucose is obtained through the digestion of carbohydrates such as starch in the rice from the food that we eat. Right? So we have to eat food in order to obtain the glucose. So for example, rice. Once we eat rice or bread or uh, sweet potatoes or spaghetti that contains uh, carbohydrates, these carbohydrates can be digested to form glucose, to produce glucose which is absorbed by the body and then sent to the cells by the blood so that the cells can carry out cellular respiration and produce energy from the glucose that is broken down. However, for green plants, they have chlorophyll. All right, so the light energy from the sun can be trapped by chlorophyll in the leaf cells for the process of photosynthesis to produce glucose. So green plants can produce their own glucose through photosynthesis by using light energy trapped by the chlorophyll in their leaf cells. Finally, learning standard number three. List and explain the types of cellular respiration. Right? So actually there are two types of cellular respiration. And these are aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen and it requires oxygen. Okay? So the word A here, A-E-R, uh, stands for air. Okay? So in this type of respiration, air, the oxygen in air is required to break down the glucose and produce energy in the process. But for anaerobic respiration, this respiration occurs in the absence of oxygen. 
It does not require oxygen at all for it to occur. Uh, so we add the word an here and it implies it is not aerobic. Uh, not aerobic respiration. So it's just the opposite of aerobic respiration. Okay, aerobic respiration requires oxygen, but anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. Now, apart from that, there is a process called fermentation, uh, which is not included as a type of respiration, a cellular respiration. So according to the textbook, it is an alternative pathway of obtaining energy, of getting energy, from uh, food besides cellular respiration. Okay, so it is separate from cellular respiration. Now, in fermentation, which can occur in cells, the breakdown of glucose is incomplete and it occurs in conditions of limited oxygen or without oxygen. So, um, why does the book not include fermentation as a type of cellular respiration? The answer is that cellular respiration uses the pathway or involves the electron transport chain, okay, which we do not study in this, um, so much in this syllabus. So cellular respiration, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic, anaerobic respiration, uses uh, a part of this uh, respiration which is called the electron transport chain okay but fermentation doesn't use the electron transport chain so is isn't it isn't considered a type of respiration at all all right but it is an alternative pathway of obtaining energy besides cellular respiration okay so for this chapter chapter 7 we are going to focus only on aerobic respiration and fermentation so in the next video i'll be talking about aerobic respiration and after that i'll be discussing fermentation with you. That's all for this video. Thanks for uh, listening and also for learning from here. Do share, like and subscribe. Bye for now and see you again in the next video.